be with you all today. Uh, well, that was a great talk, uh, uh, Mr. Poo. But, you know, he went to Howard University, which is one of the finest historically black, black colleges in the country down in Washington, and being around excellence. And, and uh, I know that school, they teach people to be ambitious. And, uh, you know, and so that's part of what he learned at Howard University. And then he went out and learned from some great people, which is really to be admired. Uh, they took on some big challenges. You know, being in a working music business isn't easy. Working in restaurants isn't easy. So that was a good talk he had a chance to hear from uh, today. Um, i I'll tell you a little bit about, I know you have some interest in, uh, in sports and sports media and uh, and I, I got into it because I, I had a great opportunity to go to Providence College in Rhode Island back in the 70s when uh, there was a fellow there named Dave Gavitt who basically was a basketball coach, but he basically put the NCAA tournament together the way it is now. He was in charge of getting expanding the field and getting it onto national television. And, and everything you see about it today was part of Dave Gavitt's ambition. And he also was the creator of the Big East Conference. Uh, he was a fellow named Mike Trangisi. He uh, had the, saw the need in the Northeast for a major athletic conference, and he put it together. And I had a chance to uh, cover him when I was a student at Providence, and it was a great opportunity. And do you follow hockey? Any hockey fans here? So yeah, great hockey. I covered hockey primarily when I was at Providence. And a fellow there named Lou Lamorello was a hockey coach. He now is the general manager of the Islanders. Had a kind of 25 year run with the Devils, too, uh, three Stanley Cups. But we had a chance, we saw some ambitious people there. And then I got into, uh, I came back, I ended up doing an MBA at Iona and going into uh, what we call direct marketing and banking and the credit card biz. But I got very actively involved with veterans because my dad was a World War II veteran. And uh, when he retired, I got involved with the Veterans Organization, American Legion. And I ended up uh, getting involved with hosting New York City Fleet Week. And we had sailors and Marines come up to uh, Pelham, where I, I live, and, uh, and participate in some of the Memorial Day parades. So one year, I, had this, I took this action that was life-changing. I sent a paper press release out to a couple of media companies in the area, the Journal News, uh, WVOX, and a few others, saying we'd be hosting sailors and Marines from New York City Fleet Week at our Memorial Day parade. So what happens? I get a phone call from the morning host of WVOX, Bob Marone, saying, can you call us up and tell us about your plans for Memorial Day? So I did. And he said afterwards, call us up and tell us about how it went. So I did. Well, it went great. So two weeks later, it's Flag Day on June 14th. And he said, call me up, Bob Marone. He says, Ken, can you call up and tell us about Flag Day? And I said, OK. I go online. I check my current flag protocol. And uh, so that led to doing a series of interviews with uh, WVOX on military veterans. And uh, they had an interest and uh, it became a weekly show. We started doing a weekly show every Monday at 2.30. Um, and 15 years later, we're still doing the show. We missed very, very few weeks. And it's been a chance to tell the story of veterans and people in the military. We have a lot of authors, we have military people. Uh, uh, one time we got, um, we found that the military liked to talk to small radio stations because they felt they got more coverage. And so they set up, we asked if, if somebody could tell us about, the, um, about uh, the fight against the Somali pirates in the Indian Ocean. We figured there'd be some, somebody in Navy nearby. They hook us up with a ship, with the commander of a task force on a ship in the Indian Ocean. And we did a radio segment. In fact, we did two and uh, told us about it. Uh, and uh, so the, the guest who called in is still, Admiral Terry McKnight is still a regular guest of ours. Whenever something happens in the military, we call up Admiral McKnight and say, tell us what happened. You know, what happened in the Navy? What happened in this situation? And uh, so we've been doing this show. And then um, the next life-changing thing for me is that uh, one day we had some extra time and I knew West Point had a football game that weekend. So I called West Point and said, yeah, somebody could call us and tell us about the game you have this weekend. So a fellow named Bob Beretta called in, who's now the athletic director at Lemoyne up in uh, Syracuse. And he, uh, you know, we do a talk and he says at the end of the talk, well, if you come up to the game, come on in and sit in the post game with the coach. And my response after that is we haven't missed a post game since. 
uh, talking with the different Army coaches. Uh, and uh, uh, it turned out to be, for me, a, a terrific media opportunity. Uh, and it's something we could talk about on WVOX. And then something happened around, this is uh, about 12 or 13 years ago. All of a sudden, things like Twitter became important and, and uh, Facebook and uh, building websites. And we found out that all this audio that we were talking to, we go to practice, talk to a few players, talk to the coach after practice, we could put up on our websites. And also we started attracting more of an audience. And then what happened? Mobile happened. One day we were interviewing the Army quarterback, Trent Steelman, and, uh, and the guy next to me from one of the newspapers had his phone out, and he's taking video of our talk. No, not just taking the audio down, but taking the video. So we, we instantly changed our method of doing things to take everything video off our cell phone. Of course, yeah, I forget my cell phone. I left it on my desk at work before it came out today. But, you know, we have that tablet over there. Uh, we ta we, we use uh, tablets to videotape press conferences. And sometimes if the Wi-Fi is good, we go live onto our YouTube page or our Facebook page. And, uh, you know, this is what the big broadcasting companies, CBS Sports, covers every Army football game. They bring a multi-million dollar truck and park it behind the stadium and have cables going all over the place. You know, they must have 30 people working on putting that production together. We're doing live on a tablet like that. In fact, uh, we got during COVID, um, we were given a chance to uh, show the whole hour before the game. You know, when the teams warm up because there were no fans in the stands allowed. It was just the cadets were allowed because they were you know, uh, you know, military people, but no fans were allowed in the stadium. So there was, so they would let us use. In fact, we use that tablet from the top of the stadium to do video, uh, live video. We streamed it onto Facebook of the hour before the game, the teams warming up, and the, the the family of the kicker on the team was from Hawaii, and they would get up seven in the morning because they could. You can always see the kickers on the practice field. They, you know, they stand out there out there early. And you see their numbers, they said, oh, there's our guy, Quinn, Quinn Marensky. And uh, so uh, we started doing that, and they allow us to do it. And it's just so, like on, on uh, we found a little niche in Army football is the activity around the game. You know, CBS Sports goes on, you know, CBS Sports Network, they go on the air when the ball is in the air on the kickoff, right? And uh, usually they're doing a, a studio show. There is so much going on in a pregame at a college football game. Side so West Point, it's, on, it's everywhere. There's tailgates, there's uh, there's uh, uh, bands uh, previews, and uh, and so what we did is to cover that. We cover, we do video where we stream like the parade of cadets before the game. Uh, when the team arrives at the stadium, they do a fanfare for that. Uh, they have a little band playing, and they call the Black Knights Alley, so like a fan fest area. We video that. We go live for a few minutes. And then we go up to the stadium and then we do, you know, talk while we show the team warming up on the field. We show the other team out there. And then they do a big elaborate pregame, you know, where the West Point band goes out there and they do their, they play the fight song, brave old army team. And then they, uh, the cadets come out and march on the, on the field. Nobody else is televising this. And we're doing it. And doing it off a tablet like that from the top of the press box. And, you know, then uh, they have parachute jump come in. And we film that and get that out. And then the team runs on the field and they go out for the uh, coin toss. And we'd say, oh, it's been great to bring you all this now. You can watch the game on the CBS Sports Network. But this is us a little, we, have, we, we were, used to be affiliated with American Legion, now we're affiliated, uh, we have our own broadcast company called Canvas Media. And uh, so what, uh, things like mobile and cell phones and tablets and technology like our friend Jamila is doing today. Uh, Zoom has made media, brought media to the individuals and the small groups and small organization. Mm -hmm. uh, so you can compete with the big guys. Now, uh, we'll show you some other things we've done in a minute, but I was just had the opportunity to cover the NCAA tournament up in Albany on Friday night with Iona. And it was the second time I've covered a men's tournament, third time I've covered, I covered a women's NCAA game. And uh, they are, that is a, the, the height of, of sports media broadcasting. I mean, it's comparable to the Super Bowl. It goes on for three weeks. 
And, uh, you know, there are millions of people watching those games at every site in the last Thursday or Friday. How many of you guys watched some of the NCAA tournament last week? Mm -hmm. A lot of you. It starts up again tonight. And uh, it was a big deal for Iona to make it. I know your team here has had tremendous success in the Junior College National Championships. Um, but uh, uh, Iona had Rick Pitino coaching the last few years. We did interviews with, with him. And again, um, we, you know, we're, we were uh, videotaping every single Rick Pitino press conference that we could get into. And he didn't let us in practice, so we had to go to the press conferences, mostly after games. And sometimes we figured out how to stream it, so we were streaming it live on YouTube and, you know, from a conference room. And that's faster than the school was getting it out themselves. So like, a lot of people went to our video to see Patino um, versus uh, even what Iona was putting on. They're pretty good. Uh, so a lot of those, that's the kind of things we've been able to do. Um, and media today, there's a lot of people who do volunteer media. You know, you look at, how many of you read The Patch? You know, it's The Patch, it's a local newspaper franchise. A lot of communities have it. Well, since a lot of the big newspapers have gone out of business or have been threatened, um, organizations such as colleges and their, and their journalism programs have picked up doing more and more of media in their communities themselves. And that's sort of an opportunity. You know, a school like yours, you could, there's no reason why you can't cover events in Rochelle or in Westchester County. It's, it's all part of your community. Because there's not a lot of other people doing that. And that's what's really changed today. And you can continue doing that when you graduate, um, especially you have an interest in a particular field. Ma'am, do you have a question? Um, why don't you try to cover NCAA, NCAA volleyball too? Because there was like some stats and stuff that say that it's growing as much as basketball is being televised and streamed. So why haven't you tried? Well, I, t I tell you, we cover, we are a very small organization in numbers. And uh, so, uh, so we haven't had a chance. We, we cover some uh, women's basketball, and we've covered a little bit of women's lacrosse, uh, a lot of sports in Army. Uh, so we cover ice hockey in the winter and, and, and their basketball. Um, it's just time. And what I, see, if, if any of you want to help us and be part of our team, uh, we're looking for volunteers because then we can cover more teams and cover more communities. And we're trying to figure out how to grow it right now, actually. But there's no reason why, if you're interested in volleyball, that you can't cover the volleyball teams of your choice here and others in the area and do it yourself. You can have your own Facebook page, you can have your own YouTube page, you can have your Twitter page and talk about college volleyball. And uh, you know, you can do it. That's the power of media today and equipment like that tablet and all these cell phones. Everybody's in the media business today. You know, there was an event at West Point I wanted to cover. They have, we cover a lot of their events and some of them draw really large audiences. And it was one event that, uh, they have an event in the fall where the seniors get their class ranked. And they didn't invite the media to it. So I said to, them, to the woman who runs PR for West Point, you know, you're going to have 2,000 reporters at that event. You know, they're all called parents. <laughs> Every parent's going to take a picture of that event and send it out onto their Facebook page and their little network, whatever it is, Twitter. Um, and they're all reporters. So why can't I come? Because I, just because we have a little, maybe have a little bit bigger audience and uh, cover other things. So that's starting to be established. Um, what I will tell you is like when we cover the NCAA tournament, the first thing you do when you apply for a credential to sign a contract, that you will not do any video in the arena during the NCAA tournament. You can do it, but we went up there for the practice day last Thursday, and we, we took video of the teams, and they had a press conference, so we could video that. But, uh, but you cannot take any video in the, in the arena on the day of the game. Uh, so we had to go back. They said we could go outside and do like our pre-game show and our, our post-game show from the street, you know, with the picture of the, of the arena in the background. But you can do that for any type of niche interest that you may have, whether it's volleyball, whether it's swimming, whatever the sport might be, and, and, and work your way up. Uh, what I would say, people, is like when we, 
we've been at, got ourselves into some high profile spots to ask questions. But you ask the same question of a high school coach, a college coach, or an NFL coach. You know, you ask about the quarterback. You ask about the offensive line play. You ask about, you know, the, the, you know, what, you know what's, what's the keys to the defense? You ask the same questions. So if you cover Nourishell High School, wherever the high school was that you went to, or the football team here, we got a couple of football players, we got a gentleman there who's a linebacker. You can do that and you learn the same questions. If you talk to your football coach after, you know, before a game and say, coach, what are the, what's the keys to uh, Saturday's game? I asked Jeff Bunkin that question at Army. Uh, if you got into an NFL game, you asked the same question. Of course, there's more people. So that's where you know you could build sort of your experience. Uh, the key is to do to um, get out and do it, and to produce video. The other thing is to write. And uh, I used to write for Bleacher Report. Any of you ever read Bleacher Report? I wrote 200 articles for Bleacher Report. It takes a lot of time. And uh, so we kind of switched more to video only in recent years, but the key is to write. I taught uh, sports marketing at uh, Mercy College a bunch of years ago. And the key I had is every session is to write something. Um, and I think, you know, that's good for any type of learning to write. It's to write something on a regular basis, even if it's short, just get a couple of thoughts down. Avoid writer's block by writing anything that comes in your mind. And just writing about the game, you know, that you may have watched or a player. And that's a way to get started. Um, and uh, so, any questions? Um, you know, uh, I think you have a question. Oh, go ahead, yep. William. What would you say is your, what was your biggest motivation to get to where you are now? Well, the biggest motivation is, you know, the inspiration I had in college working around people who became national uh, national figures like Dave Gavitt. If you look up Dave Gavitt in, on Google someday and, or, and some of the others, and, we, and uh, uh, we did have a lot of instruction, but then uh, when I got into doing veterans work, a lot of media is, 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 tan, is, is really a type of public, public relations. You know, you're trying to get your organization's name out into the public. Uh, that's why people want to get their team in the NCAA basketball tournament because they know millions of people will hear the name and will think of that institution, that school, as substantial. I mean, I know it's a school of 3,500 students, and they're playing UConn as a school of, what, 25,000 students last, last Friday. And uh, so that's, that was a great achievement. You know, basketball can be kind of an equalizer uh, sometimes. And... Uh, um, Do you have another question? Go ahead. Uh, what would you think your biggest obstacle, if there was an obstacle, from the transition from the uh, days before media to now, this new generation, for yourself, a gentleman that's been in it for the long haul? Well, the big challenge is traditional media, I would say, uh, which is, is struggling because they're struggling generating ad dollars. And uh, so, you know, it's it's, it's sometimes, you know, like we were in a press conference after Iona's game against UConn last Friday night, and there were 10 national uh, basketball writers in the audience, maybe more. And uh, most of them were pretty good. I got, I got a couple of questions in. Um, it's, not, it's pretty notable, you know, I, it's one, it was one of the more important moments of my career asking Rick Pitino a question after he just competed in an NCAA basketball game. But we had the opportunity. But, but, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's still a challenge. Not everyone wants to accept what I would call digital marketing. Mm -hmm. uh, I work like in banking and everybody had to learn how to communicate with customers digitally during the pandemic because customers couldn't walk in the, uh, in the uh, bank branch. So it was more and more learning how to do things digitally. Things like radio stations are trying to figure out, okay, how do we keep our, radio, our revenue base up which is based on traditional radio, radio broadcasting while still getting things out on, on Facebook pages or on websites. And uh, so that's been kind of the challenge, but there's a lot of room for innovation there. And, go ahead, Wayne. Would, would you, have you ever thought of expanding your field as far as work? As far as work? 
like when you worked with army and you worked with colleges and things of that nature would you ever expand your field to the pros uh probably not uh because we found a niche that we can operate in you know we found something that's substantial you know um and yeah and uh, what we found is that when we go to cover west point there's one or two other reporters there you go to a giant's practice there's gonna be a dozen reporters there from all the newspapers and media outlets that you know so it's very hard to for a small organization to to try to cover uh, the pro teams. Now, once you get to a certain level of audience size, they start taking you seriously. And it used to be, like we've applied for Yankee credentials a few times, mainly to cover their military appreciation day. And we've gotten in, and we've done some notable interviews. It's not bad when Hal Steinbrenner said hello to you, you know, after he's seen you a few times. Um, but um, it's very hard to get credential unless you can show you've got a really sizable audience. Now, if you have a large Twitter audience, you have a large Facebook or website audience for the stories you put out. I mean, anybody can write a story on the Yankee game from sitting at home, right? And put it on your Facebook page. Uh, the question is getting into that media room. And, and, uh, and uh, that's what's the challenge. But more, but what the, the companies and the pro teams are finding is they have to, they realize there are entrepreneurs out there who are starting their own media groups that have enough size and experience that they want to have them at their games. So it's, it, is, it is happening. <coughs> Excuse me. You have another question, sir. So um, how, would you, how do you compete with the other, report, with the other reporters? Like, do they not got the same content? Do you get to attract them? So how do you compete against them? By being there more often. Yeah. I'll tell you. Are you on, uh, which team did you say you're on? Football. You're on football. Well, I'll tell you, uh, we work with uh, Jeff Munkin, the coach in Army, who's at Georgia Southern and the Naval Academy. And one time after, in fact, it was a game after we were out at Penn State about six, seven years ago. They lost. He wasn't in a really particularly good mood. And one of the reporters who had driven all the way out to State College from here uh, asked him a question. The coach didn't really like it. And so he said, if you came to practice once in a while, you know what we're trying to do. So I, I make sure I'm at his practice once a week, all season long, starting August 1st, the first day of practice. Uh, we're there. I was there one time. It was 117 degrees on the practice field. Mm -mm. They shouldn't have been practicing. They still did because of schedule. They couldn't move it to later in the day. And I was out there on the day, you know, on that practice field. And I'll tell you, everybody sees who's there. And so when you get to the big days, you know, they call it the big stages and press conferences. They call on you first. And, uh, and then hopefully you then have, you know, the right question uh, to ask. But that's the way you break through that is by being there as often as you can, getting your work out so that people see it and uh, people believe it's responsible. You know, the, and a lot of it's asking open questions. You never want to put somebody on the spot. You know, you tell them what happened. I would say, just, I'll just tell us one little quick story. Uh, we went out with Army to Ohio State about, how was that, 2018, second game of the year. The year they lost two, their first two games of the year, didn't lose again all year. And they lost in front of 100,000 people at Ohio State. And uh, it was one of those games that they played well the first half, second half, Ohio State just poured it on. And, they, and Army had a fumble, you know, the quarterback fumbled, fumbled a half, you know, a, a handoff to the fullback. And went, you know, got picked up, run for a touchdown, that kind of situation. It was all over after that. So I'm in the press room with the Army coach and, and quarterback. And there's, a th there's like three of us there, maybe five. And the athletic director is sitting in the back. And those kind of folks, you know, the officials from the school that made the trip. So I had, you know, I asked a question. I had to ask the quarterback, okay, it's Kelvin Hopkins. Kelvin, what happened on the, on the handoff to the fullback? And that's all I asked. And he, being an upfront guy, just said, you know, he missed, he didn't do it right, and it, you know, it just happened, and you know, and uh, and he was upfront about it. But I just asked him about that that point, and you know, that's kind of the tough thing when you have to ask a tough question. Losses are always tough, but uh, the key I find is you take good notes and you ask about the key plays. 
And sometimes, you know, even in a loss, somebody ran for a, they had a, you know, they may have had a 70 yard touchdown play in the second quarter. And make sure you ask about that because that was, that was a positive. You know, and it's, that's one of the things that's tough in press conferences. You got to have good notes because it's so easy to forget something that happened in the first half. Okay. So do you think you have to play sports to cover sports? No. No. No, you see that in the broadcasters today. Um, because a lot of people who learn broadcasting, oh, I'm missing the two friends there, um, didn't play. Um, the key to it is to, is to report, is to do the activity, is to write, is to uh, be able to, you know, you know, it's like the players now all want to do interviews because it helps their name, image, and likeness. They can use it for that, right? And, and it gives you experience. Uh, the, the key is to do, if you want to be a reporter, be a reporter. And do, and if you're playing, fine, but maybe do a weekly interview with a, with a colleague, a fellow student who wants to do a report. I do that today. Uh, so you may find a friend who's in, in the media program here who wants to sit down with you every week and talk about your, you know, your season. And just how it's going, what are the challenges, what are you working on, and do five minutes. And that's how you learn to do media. You know, even if you're playing, or you, you know, keep it, keep a, uh, you know, a notebook and write, jot down things and write things on your Facebook page. And you can do that. You just, you just got to be nice. You just got to say positive things. You know, you don't critique anybody. You keep it very, very positive if you're doing something like that. But that's what name, image, and likeness. I know, professor here has been telling you all about the dramatic increase. That's one of the ways to build an account is just talk about what you're doing, uh, how your season's going. You know, how you cope with, with athletics and schoolwork, you got a big test the day before a big game, that sort of thing. Happens all the time, just write. But keep it, your key is to keep it positive. And write positive thoughts wherever you can. And that's how you learn, so that when you, you know, you, you, know, you want to finish playing, you may have a chance to do reporting. So, and, you, and you've got some experience. And you know, like, like with a, a lot of people, at, will put their mobile phone in a little stand and hit record and, and talk. Do a little report, and of course your coaches don't want you to give away anything about what, what you're planning for the next week's game. But you can kind of talk at a very, you might say, high level. Sir, you had a question? Oh, um, it was kind of just an add-on from Penn State. I'm, I'm coming from there. I played here now. Okay. Um, it's it's like a simulation. It's the same thing every week. So like that's probably why like once a week. It's like literally like the schedule is the same thing. I felt like I was just in a loop. Um, I also had a question in regards to. Um, do you think media is beneficial or like more beneficial or more harmful to the actual athlete itself? Like seeing bad things in the media posted about them or like, how do you think that, how do you think that plays a role into kind of like? Well, what I think you're getting at, there's responsible media and there's irresponsible media. And like, I always look, I don't read anything that's not, somebody who doesn't put their full name on it. You know, if you, if you just put Dan from White Plains, or even, you know, whatever. I, I don't take that as serious because they're just passing gossip. And like, we had a situation a couple of years ago where Army coach Jeff Milton was a candidate to be the head coach of Kansas State. And uh, ended up going to the coach from Buffalo. And But for a few days before that, we were scanning Twitter for anything that looked responsible. There was a lot of irresponsible. And so, that's what you differentiate, and you want to be a responsible reporter. Um, there's somebody, some people talk about the idea of whether you want to be credentialed or not. If you don't care, if you want, let's say you wanted to cover Iona basketball, um, or even or your own school, um, the school is only credentialed people they consider to be responsible, and they're not going to respond. They're not going to credential anybody who doesn't sign their name to their work and take responsibility for it. You can be critical once in a while for legitimate things, but you've got to be responsible. And, and if you don't want to ever get a credential to a game, you don't have to be responsible, you can say, but people will start to ignore you. But if you want to, take, if you want to sit in the press box at Madison Square Garden, or at an Iona game, or an Army game, or get, you know, into a, much less an NCAA game, you got to be responsible. And, uh, and and the coaches will notice if you say something irresponsible. Um, it gets dicey, the 
you know, when coaches are under the gun, you know, uh, when they're, they're afraid that they don't turn things around that season, they could be fired. And uh, they get very antsy about uh, what's said about them. Uh, we've seen that happen. So again, you want to just be responsible. Tell us, what I talk about is tell the story. You know, it's like we did an interview with any one of you and want to know your story. Where are you from? You know, how'd you get to Monroe? You know, what, how do you like it? What do you play? You know, how do you balance schoolwork and, and athletics? Um, so that side of thing. And um, the other factor I found um, in doing that, and this crosses over, I do a lot of business interviews. And people are very sensitive in business as to what you know may be said about them. So it's basically you let them talk. You just I, I have a comment uh, I learned in radio was let the guests talk. As soon as you hear a sportscaster do a long-winded question, they really can't figure out. They really want to make a statement rather than ask a question. You don't need to do that. I mean, um, you want to just let the guests talk and, and address the subjects that are on their mind. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. That's probably one of the most important things I could probably relate in, in this. Um, and uh, I thought maybe we'd just take a, any other questions? No. Do you want to take a look? You were nice to set up. Why don't you go to my YouTube page? I'll show you some of the stuff that we've done. Why don't we look at the, this? is what we did at the Army Navy game. Those are players coming in. I had a pretty good spot. And uh, maybe I'll stay till I get to a question. That was a kicker of number 15 who won the game with a 40 yard field goal in double overtime. Uh, thanks. Uh, congratulations, uh, Tim Prince of Canvas Media. Uh, Quinn, you want to start to take us through the kick? Okay. We'll go ahead and we'll go another one. But notice I kept my question short. I just said, tell us about the kick. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's a great moment. I mean, you know, and uh, let's go down. This is, uh, as Eric Russell used to say, well, let's hear Coach Martin. Adam, the so. whole way. <laughs> this all off my cell phone, by the way. What a win. Uh, what a game. First of all, just credit to, uh, to the Navy team and how hard they fought. It, 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 that was two football teams that fought just as hard as they possibly could. And, I've said this to many people in the actual what's different about this game. The difference is, is the players. It, it's, there, there's places that have great crowds like that. I mean, I looked around and every seat was full of that place. It was awesome. What a great crowd. And there's stadiums like that every Saturday afternoon around the country. So the difference in this game is the players. Every one of those players and every one of those young people that were sitting up in the sand that are their, that are their classmates have made it a pledge to serve this nation and to perhaps pay the ultimate price for all the rest of us who haven't made that pledge. And oh, that coach that goes in a little different. Talk. Let's go on to another one. Uh, let's just, just go down there a little bit. Uh, let's go to the coin toss video just for a second. It's right there. Yeah. This is on the pregame height. This is what you can do with this cell phone cover every day. It's all on my phone. But it, it helps have a connection to be on the side. I just want to see if we get to a uh, spot. Yeah. It's Andre Carter, the Army linebacker, give me a fist bump on the field. Nice to have a relationship with players. He's uh, an NFL prospect. I think he's going to go in the third or fourth round. So, that's, that's good for love. Uh, but again, it's, when it, it showed that a little bit is relationship. You know, because I have interviewed Andre seven or eight times during the year. He's always very known, knows me by name. You know, in a big moment on a big stage, he you know, acknowledges it, which is, I'm never going to forget that particular moment. Um, being on the field down, you know, Army Navy, and you see that crowd, and uh, get acknowledged by a player. They're not really supposed to do that, but, you know, it was kind of neat. I know any of you guys who, you know, were willing to play uh, could appreciate it. Let's take another look. Let's go to my first page for a second. Yeah, let's go to my main page. And I'll just show you something we've done lately. Adam, the whole way. 
And I'll just show you some of the things we were doing. Um, that one's an interview we did, we, a weekly interview we did with Kevin Hamilton, who's a former Iona player on their Jim Bevano team. And he works for, he does some work for ESPN now. That's, that's an interview that did with an admiral about his new book. Um, we did some talks. I'll show you. See, there's one uh, in front of the arena last uh, Friday. And, uh, you know, we do things like, uh, you know, we did a video of the cheerleaders. And uh, um, I just want to show you this picture of Kate Mager from Iona. She was a grad student who made three three-point shots in a row in the championship game of the MAC tournament. But, but she played for Merrimack for four years because of the five-year rule, because of COVID, she got an extra year played as a grad student for Iona. She got a master's degree in, so, in, in, uh, in uh, to work with special ed children at Iona this, this year while playing. And she's gonna have, she has a job already with, you know, to teach uh, uh, children with, uh, with special needs. And, really cool. and then we got Dennis Jenkins up there, who's was doing 12, 12 to 15 points a game. And uh, let's hear a little bit of Rick Pitino down here. We got to show Rick right there. This is the same for you, Con. You're going to press that first. Yeah, I just did. I had to move the camera. Uh, certainly, it's going to be Talik Scout. Uh, and. He's, he's been hot of late with his scouting, so you never know. They're a great team. We know that they're very physical, very athletic, and that we'll have to do a great job on the backboard. You've been a part of a lot of these selection Sundays. This is your second championship here in three years. Is there anything like this time of the year? What brings so many members for you and makes it fun? I don't think there's anything close to much madness uh, in the world, so to speak, because so many upsets, so many teams, so many people rooting. It's not like the Super Bowl where it's two teams. You know, there, there's so many people right now who all think they have a chance. And um, certainly we do as well. Okay, that's right, pretty good. So you got a little Rick Pitino. But notice the four, those are called microphone flags. You know on the microphone, they have the name of the media company on it? Mm -hmm. Well, the microphone flag. Yeah, and all three, you know, three or four major New York City media companies and why. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Cam Betts Media got it on a microphone flag right there with them. And that video got 10,000 views on YouTube. 10,000 uh, online. And that's how we compete because we got out there faster than those other companies who didn't care about posting on YouTube. We did. And everybody, every time we did an interview with Rick Pitino, we got 500 views, which is a lot. I mean, a lot of things we do, we get 100. Uh, but that one uh, did, uh, did well. And uh, so we were right up there. Um, is there any other questions? Um, what I would say is, you know, why we do this. I mean, for me, basketball is fun and football is fun, but we meet a lot of people. Because of Army, um, they're surrounded. Everybody who's senior in the U.S. Army military is at West Point periodically. And we've twice interviewed the Secretary of the Army. Uh, we interviewed Mark Esper and we interviewed uh, Ryan McCarthy. Ma'am? So you wouldn't like to spend with other sports, but do you want to with football and basketball? Well, you know, the way it is, basketball and football are the biggest audiences. And what we're seeing the colleges do, the colleges want every single game, every single home game to be televised because they know there are parents of the players that they want to be able to see. So the tennis matches at West Point, uh, the soccer games, the lacrosse games, uh, the baseball and softball games, every single game is televised. And it's either, and most of it is on, on their websites, their athletic department's websites, or uh, some of it's ESPN2. Um, do you realize why ESPN2 is working with colleges? Mm -hmm. They set up an agreement with colleges. Iona has it, and they basically, Iona bought a truck. You know, I don't want to cost two hundred thousand dollars, and they park it outside their basketball arena. But from that, they can t put their own broadcast. They put the cable out to the court. They hire some announcers. My friend uh, Kevin Hamilton does the game sometimes, and they can go from the truck to ESPN, and it's on ESPN two or ESPN U or whatever it is. And that is what a lot of schools are doing to get onto the ESPN system. Uh, that gets them some national exposure. The coaches love that because it helps with recruiting. Um, and so on. 
Uh, so there's a lot. Of, so that's where there's a lot of opportunities, uh, because you know the, the big guys are starting to do micro broadcasting, which is what we've been doing, because everybody's got a son or a daughter who's on a team and wants to see him play, and it helps. So that's one of the trends you see in college, at, you know, marketing today, is every home game there is going to be televised or reported on. And so what like you guys can do is, again, you have your media club, I guess you're, some of you are in the media club here at Sports Club, but you go out and interview the players on your team at pra after practice or after a game. And you do it just like we do. We put our, we have a, put our camera into a, a stand and on a tripod, and we plug a microphone into it, it costs $100, and talk to the person, take it down, and then put it up on our, on our own Facebook page. Um, and so that's how you create your own niche media uh, group. Uh, challenge is monetizing it, frankly, and I think that's what's going to be the challenge with NIL accounts is all money goes to the top level. Uh, so it's harder to uh, monetize, but if you're telling something important, you know, you can you can find sponsors, and that's the way way to kind of approach it. Um, but I think we've been able to do from covering veterans, we get into some important topics. We talk about veterans' health care, education, transition, job training, uh, and what's we had a neat moment too last year. The secretary of the VA or the senior doctor from the VA, Dr. Sharp was coming up to Yonkers to do a talk because they were opening up a new clinic there. And uh, so because I, I was putting out some similar stories out on LinkedIn, I got a message from the director of PR for the VA. The VA is the world's largest healthcare organization. And they sent me an invitation to be at the press conference for the doctor in Yonkers the next day. And I said, yeah, I'll be there. And we got we waited our turn, a couple of TV companies did interviews, and then we did an interview with Dr. Sharp. That's cool. And, uh, you know, one of the things you may not know is during COVID, uh, the VA lost 4,000 doctors and staff due to COVID, who died during, you know, taking care of patients, 4,000. It was, it was just atrocious, I mean. And so I mentioned that to Dr. Sharp, and he said, oh yeah, what service those people provided? And sometimes if you stay up on things, you, you really ask a key question. Um, I generally say don't, is we have a saying we learned at West Point called stay in your lane. Anyone ever hear that expression? Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. Stay in your lane. That means stay on your topic of the day. Don't go all over the place uh, with something extraneous. Don't kind of, it's like an NCAA tournament. The national reporters are all asking Patino, what are you gonna do next week? Are you going to St. John's, blah, blah, blah. And he, he talked about it. He really wasn't happy. I asked him, tell me about the three players who played for you who were sitting on the podium. And they had just left. The, Dennis Jenkins, Beric, Jean-Louis, and Walter Clayton. I said, tell me about the development of those three players in the course of a year and their leadership development. And he went out for two minutes. And so I kind of got back in lane. I brought the press conference back in lane by asking that question. And the moderator thanked me for it afterwards because they don't, they really wanted, that's what they wanted the subject of the day. I did take one chance one day. I gotta tell you, one day we were with Jeff Munkin, maybe in that same room, after they had beat the Navy, uh, I think it was the 2018 Army Navy game. And we'd gone through all the questions, and he's, he was a happy coach. When you beat Navy, you're happy. And uh, so, it's winding down, and I think to myself, do I ask him? And I, 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 I raised my hand, I got called on. In fact, I had to say, I had to say, can I ask one more question? And because I, and I was granted that. So I said, coach, before the game, um, President Trump came over to, was on the field. He had, been, he had been at the White House. The Army football team was recognized in the White House that spring for the, winning the Commander in Chief Trophy. So you had the, uh, uh, the president came over to say hello to you before the game. What was that moment like? And he stops, he says, oh yeah, nice to see the president. You know, we'd seen him at the White House, you know, before, you know, in the spring. And then he stops and he says, it's 30 seconds to, to kickoff. I'm talking to my guys in the headset, trying to get the kickoff team out on the field, and the leader of the free world comes over to wish me luck. Hmm. And I stopped him and thought, how fortunate I am to be able to be in that situation. 
and uh, and it was one where he became very genuine about his moment, you know, and he's and he and about the opportunity that he had. And so I took a chance on a question, but because of relationship, you know, I could do it, and it and it worked. And it was you know something that you uh, uh, you remember. Um, the other real good story I had. I, I, Worth telling is uh, is we were invited to interview the Secretary of the Army, um, Mark Esper, became went to be, um, Secretary, uh, and uh, we I was at the halftime of the Army Navy basketball game, and I was just asked the day before to go do it, and so we went over. It turned out to be me and one other person asking Mark Esper questions, and I asked all the typical questions I would ask almost any Army veteran. On my radio show, you know, and, and you find when you do this a lot, certain, you learn certain questions work, and other, and you stick with those questions that people tend to respond well to. So I asked those. The other guy was asking the odd questions, you know. That, that was the year that there, there were, the president wanted to have a Fourth of July parade in Washington, and the military was kind of resisting. So he, he asked those questions, and I got my questions in. Yeah, it went, went fine, but then. Uh, in the game, the women's game is the first of uh, that, it's a double header, the women's game and then the men's game. And when I was watching the women's game, I realized, oh yeah, I saw one of those Navy players on television doing an interview. And she said she's branching submarines. And you know what light service, serving on a submarine might be like? <laughs> it's very difficult. Women weren't given the opportunity until about five years ago. And uh, it's one of the last things women that and, and serving in infantry in the army were the last things that women uh, uh, were, were allowed to do and, and have done ter terrifically well at. Uh, but anyway, I had to run up, I asked the Navy PR person, could I talk to that person after the game? You know, the woman who was branching submarine was their point guard. And they said they'd set up. So I had to leave the interview with Mark Esper, the Secretary of the Army, run over across the street to inter get to the post game and for the women's game. And I interviewed the young lady, and she was more interesting to talk to. A uh, young woman who was ambitious enough to branch submarines in the United States Navy uh, was a terrific interview. And you remember some of those little moments. So anyway, um, I, pro I hope this has been interesting. Um, you know, we're looking for volunteers if you're interested. We haven't quite become a paid uh, I kind of consider what we do a club. Uh, but you know, you can tell from some of the opportunities we have. But any questions? Uh, it's really been a pleasure to visit Monroe today. Thank you so much, Ken. We appreciate you. Anybody have a question? Anybody else have a question? Anybody else have a question? Wonderful. Okay. All right, guys. Thanks Thank again. Y'all have a good weekend. Thank you. All right.